Good morning. I'm Judge Laura Inveen from the King County Superior Court. And I am Judge K2 Shaw from the King County District Court. It is the court's goal in every jury trial to find jurors who will decide the case before them without prejudice or bias. Because under our state and federal constitutions, everyone deserves a fair trial. So we'd like to talk to you about what exactly bias is and why we should all keep improper biases out of the courtroom. We also want to share information with you about something called unconscious bias. Although many of the examples in this video relate to age, race, or gender, unconscious bias can cause us to make positive or negative assumptions about people based on many different attributes, including disability, sexual orientation or gender identity, immigration status, economic status, or religion. My name is John C. Kuhnauer, United States District Judge. Biases are prejudices in favor or against a thing, person, or group compared with another. Basically, bias equals prejudging in a positive way or a negative way. It's been proven that most biases happen at an unconscious level. In fact, researchers have found that unconscious bias is a part of how we all think and process information. It's important as jurors to be aware that unconscious bias exists. Once you understand what it is, we'll explore what you can do to address the effects of unconscious bias while serving on a jury so that you can be sure you are making objective decisions and treating everyone fairly. Biased beliefs and attitudes can be both positive and negative. You may have a deep-seated belief that basketball is a better sport than football. You may prefer strawberry to raspberry jam. These are conscious biases that are not inherently negative. However, our conscious biases can also lead to intentional and harmful discrimination. For example, Consciously deciding a person is not entitled to equal rights based on their race, sex, age, nationality, or religion is a clear example of intentional, deliberate, and harmful discrimination. Today, though, I want to talk to you about unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is different, and it's something we all have simply because we're human. It's the set of automatic preferences deep in our brains that instantaneously influence our decisions and how we perceive people and situations without our conscious awareness. Unconscious biases have evolved to help us make quick, efficient judgments and decisions with minimal mental effort. Because these unconscious biases are automatic, we use them to make judgments and decisions without even realizing that's what we're doing. But if and when we stop to consciously think about it, we might decide our initial hasty judgments don't actually fit with the information we are being presented with and with what we really know to be fair. Let's run through a few quick examples of unconscious bias to experience it firsthand. Remember, we're looking for instantaneous and instinctive decision-making that is influenced by deep-seated stereotypes and attitudes in our brains. Earlier in this video, we all saw the judge. Truth is, each of us made instantaneous decisions or prejudgments about what type of person he is, even though we don't know him or have any additional information about him. Perhaps you instinctively felt that he was smart, impartial, patient, open-minded, or in charge. Or you may have concluded that he was all-powerful, tough, or scary. And when you first view this biker, you may instinctively feel he is either an adventurous free spirit or maybe a rebel who's tough, abrasive, or even dangerous. Through unconscious bias, our minds make quick decisions we are not aware of so that we can feel comfortable, safe, and confident. The fact is, we cannot process all the information we receive. So without knowing it, our minds create mental shortcuts and use our past experiences to help us make quick and efficient decisions. Take a look at this list of colors. 
Try and name the colors as quickly as possible while ignoring the words. Now, do the same thing with this list. Name the colors, not the words. While it may take a little longer to identify the colors in the second list because we aren't relying on color-coded shortcuts, taking the extra time to take in and process more information is worth it because more data helps us make more accurate decisions. The shortcuts our minds rely on can be really helpful in our day-to-day -day lives because they allow us to make good and efficient decisions based on past experience. But some of the shortcuts we use, the ones that are driven by unconscious bias, can have really negative consequences, causing us to unknowingly make unfair distinctions among individuals when everyone should be judged fairly. Although many people in the U.S. believe it's wrong to judge people based on stereotypes, based on things like age, race, or gender, studies have shown that we most often react unconsciously to these differences to make decisions in our day-to-day -day lives. In one study, science faculty at research institutions looking to hire a science laboratory manager reviewed the same resume with some copies randomly assigned a man's name and others a woman's name. It turns out that male and female evaluators were more likely to conclude that the male candidate was more competent and more worthy of being hired than the female candidate, even though the resumes were exactly the same. The assumptions underlying these results, that men as a group are better at science, can lead to flawed assessments. Understanding this kind of unconscious bias can happen is an important first step in preventing similar kinds of unconscious bias from impacting your decision making during trial. The fact is, most of us don't want to judge others unfairly or be guided by unconscious bias when making decisions. But simply having good intentions does not work. Neither does ignoring things like age, race, or gender, because unconscious bias really does happen without us realizing it. What studies have shown does work is to first know that unconscious bias exists and occurs for all of us. Second, carefully examine our decisions and judgments as jurors. And third, question our decisions by asking whether they would be different if the witness, lawyer, or person on trial were of a different race, age, or gender. If you think unconscious bias has shaped your evaluation, I encourage you to think about the evidence again with this video in mind and to discuss it with your fellow jurors. Thank you for taking the time to consider this issue. You are about to become part of the most important tradition in our justice system, the right to a trial by jury. Thank you for your service and your efforts to ensure everyone receives a fair trial.